After an aspirant qualifies CSI net examination, he or she will be preparing for the upcoming JRF interviews or you can say PhD interviews. So many institutions or universities, they conduct their own universities where they select the right candidates for their lab. And the main motto of conducting this interview is just to present yourself in just a way that convinces interviewers to hire you. And to achieve all those success, today I have come up with a video where I'm going to discuss what are the interview tips for JRF qualified candidates. So hey everyone, this is your host Ria from Biotechnica. And today we will be seeing what are the most commonly interviews asked questions and answers that you have to give to the interviewer and also what are the general and asked questions that are related to research work. So we will be seeing all those questions that you really have to prepare for your interview. So let's dive into the video and see all the questions that you have to really prepare for your upcoming JRF interviews. Coming to the questions that are most commonly asked during interviews and the answers that you have to give to the interviewers for all these questions. So firstly, we'll see all the questions that you need to prepare the answers for all these things. So firstly, we'll see the questions and the first question that is there, the interviewers asked during interviews is, tell us something about yourselves. So the first question that you need to prepare is tell us something about yourself. So here you should prepare your, uh, you can say, uh, introduction about yourself, what you have done, uh, your family background, everything, your academic qualifications, your research experience and what all your achievements, what is your uh, research interest as well as your hobbies. So this will come in this tell us something about yourself. So this is the first question that you need to prepare for interview. The second is why do you want to pursue PhD or if you are looking for an assistant professor job. So the second question that it arises, why do you want to pursue PhD? So you should be giving the convincing, uh, you can say the explanation for the same that why do you want to pursue PhD in that respective institute? So you should know the well and you should prepare well for this question. The third is what educational qualifications do you possess? So suppose if you're missing this educational qualification and if you're not mentioning during your introduction or tell us something about yourself question. So then they will ask you the educational qualification where you have to mention the educational qualification that you have done along with your BSc as well as MSc dissertations and also your research experience. The next is what innovation would you like to add to the scientific community? So they will be asking you this next question, what innovation would you like? So you will be able to answer this question as well because you need to answer in terms of research and you should be knowing your uh, skills, you should be knowing your basic concepts and your expertise and accordingly you have to tell about your innovation. Like if suppose if you have any expertise in molecular biology, so you will be answering that innovation part according to that itself. The next is what teaching skills and techniques you learned over the past year. So now they're asking about what teaching skills and techniques that you have learned. So you should recall all the techniques that you have learned during your practical time, during your bachelor's and also during your master's. And if you have any research experience that you can mention that skill as well. So you should mention all the skills that you should know and that you have learned. And also you should be having that thorough idea about all those concepts as well as skills. Now the next question arises, what is one course as well as the three course that you are particularly interested in research? Now they will be asking you three areas of research, like you have to uh, say about the three expertise, like let's say cell biology, molecular biology, as well as let's say biochemistry. So you should be knowing every detail in and outs of all these three subjects because they have asked you a question, they have put forward a question, like what are the three courses that you want to do a research or you are interested in and this time you should say all these three subjects that you are really interested in and you want to get into research and if they are asking anything or any question pertaining to that topic you should be able to answer that and if you are not uh, answering that so you will not be able to qualify that interview. So make sure you are mentioning all these three subjects and fields that you are really interested in and you have in and out knowledge of all these three subjects. The next is challenges you look into this field and the way for resolving them. 
Suppose if you uh, if you are uh, telling about infection biology like tuberculosis, I want a novel approach for or you can say for treating this tuberculosis disease so that there is no uh, uh, you can say statistical data for this and there is no uh, infection rate. So they will be asking you the challenges that you face during this field. So they will be asking what are the challenges or the unfilled gaps that are not at all resolved. So you should be able to answer the unfilled gaps that are still there and you should also be having the ways for resolving them. So this is about the challenges that you look into the field and also how you can resolve them. The next is why you want us to hire you. The next question and the most specific question that every institute or university they ask, why do you want us to hire you? So here you should be able to answer about your skills and your expertise and how you are different from others. Only then they will be hiring you. So you should be able to uh, answer about why you want us to hire you and that answer should be well decent and it should be uh, convincing for the interviewer or the who is asking that question. So it should be very convincing for them. The next is what makes you different from other candidates? Again, the same question that they ask, what makes you different from other candidates? So make sure you should be able to answer this question as well. Means you should be having that enough research skill. You should be well uh, clear with the concepts and the working mechanism of the instruments and all the protocols that are there for the biotechnology fields. How does your work fit with our department and university? So generally this question is for like uh, not for JRF. Sometimes they can come up to this question, but you should prepare for this question as well. The next question that they ask you, where do you want to see yourself in the last 10 years? So here they will be asking you, suppose if you're working in a lab. So after your PhD and postdoc, where you want to see yourself and what will be your a contribution to the scientific community and will, what will be your novel findings. So you should be able to answer that question as well. What if your experiments fail in between? So usually it happens when we are pursuing your, our any kind of research or we are into PhD. So there will be a chance that our experiments fail and most of the time experiments fail only and after that we have to repeat that experiments. So they will be asking that question what if your experiments fail in between and how you will be able to handle that experiments. So what if your experiments fail in between and you can't success in your work then that time you have to uh, talk about the management skill of yours that how you will be able to manage that experiments and you will have that patience to con uh, continue that or you can say to repeat that experiment so you should be able to answer this question as well the next is why did you leave the previous lab so suppose if you were working in the previous lab and now you're joining somewhere else and working for GRF or your PhD. So the next question that it arises as the interviewer they personally questioned me, why did you leave the previous lab? So you should not tell that company was not good or this lab was not having this facility. You should be always positive and you should be ending, ending up with the decent words. So you should be uh, telling all the convincing answers for this like the lab I wanted to explore more about the lab I wanted to learn more skills so that I was not finding so I, I thought I will pursue this or I can work for the JRF or PhD in this particular lab so I just visited your profile your company and I found that all these techniques are there so in this way you have to end up your conversation so you should prepare for this if you are enrolled before. The next question that it comes is what are the salary expectations and this question will arise only if you are appearing for the assistant professor job not JRF. Because you know that JRF emoluments is fixed that is 31k per month along with HRA that depends on the metro as well as non-metro city. So this question is basically for those candidates who are appearing for the assistant professor job. So you no need to worry who are applying for JRF or PhD because the emoluments remains the same for the first two years and for the next three years it will be upgraded to rupees 35,000 per month as per the GOI norms. The next question, when will you join our lab? So you should be able to answer this question that I will be joining within a week. So you will be very positive and you should be able to answer in a right way. Not like I will be joining after two months. So you should be able to answer. Yeah, I will be joining within a week or in within 15 days. The next test, do you have any questions to ask us? At last, the interviewer asks, do you have any questions to ask, ask us? That time you should be able to ask at least 
one question related to their work. So beforehand, you have to suppose if you're applying for NIA interview. So uh, what all you have to do, you have to look into the profiles of the scientists, you have to look into the labs you are interested in. And particularly, you have to talk about that question. And you have to also see your interest and you can just pick up one question. Ki, sir, I was reading your publication, your article and I'm not finding the answer. Can you please explain it? So like this, you have to come up with at least one question. So make it a habit because if you are asking, then only the examiner or you can say the interviewer will come to know about your skills that you are really interested in. Otherwise, they will feel like the interview or the questions are just completed and you have answered whatever it was asked. So make sure you are showing and you are developing interest during the interview and you are talking about your research skill and also the interest that you really have and you wanted to show into your PhD or GRF work. So make sure you are asking at least one question at the last and that question should be valid. I mean, it should be related to your research work, not anything else about means other than those work. It should be related specifically to the research work. So these are all the questions that you need to really prepare for the JRF interview. But if I say you what all questions that you need to specifically prepare that will be asked by the interviewer, that is first question. Tell us something about yourself. This is the first question. The second is, why do you want to get into PhD? This is the second question that he asks. And this is a personal or you can say my experience that I have been interviewed by the interviewer and all these questions were asked to me. The second is, why do you want to pursue your PhD? And also the educational qualification that you have already covered in your introduction part. What are the teaching skills that you have? This and the next is, three fields that you really interested in and you wanted to pursue your PhD. The next is what makes you different from other candidates? So this also you should be able to answer. Why did you leave the previous lab? So they answered questions to me and I answered it for the same. Why did I leave my previous labs? And the last is when did you join our lab? And the last question that they will ask, do you have any question to ask us? So this time you will be having all these seven to eight questions to prepare. So make sure you are preparing these questions before you are appearing for your interview. And if you are preparing all these questions, there will be a chance of tracking that interview and you will be able to enroll for your PhD or any JRF interview that you wish to. So these are all, all the questions. So these are all the possibilities that I have mentioned. It's not like all 15 and 14 questions will be asked to you. These are all the possibilities. So you have to well aware of all these things and you have to prepare for all these questions. So here specifically, I have marked seven to eight questions that you need to prepare and they can ask anything from these questions. The next is, what are the general and must ask question that is related to research work? Now here we have talked about what are the general question like what, why should I hire you? Tell us something about yourself when you will join the lab. But now they wanted to test your uh, research skill and this time they will be asking many different questions. And now students will be confused like which area to focus on. Like once they qualify the CSIR net JRF, now there will be a more confusion because they will be like they are feeling directionless this time. Now which area to uh, refer more like we have to learn cell biology or immunology or molecular biology biochemistry or techniques we have to refer so you should be learning at least all these questions that are mentioned here so I have come up with a general and must ask question that are asked during or that is asked related to research work during the interview time so you should be well prepared for all these questions that are asked the first is scientific instrument their concept as well as follow-up what do you understand by the first statement as the question? Scientific instrument means you should be knowing about the basic mechanism and the principle of like say ELISA, you can say RIA, you can say flow cytometry, facts, how does a PCR works, what are the three different stages in PCR. So you should be well clear with the concepts of all these things and also a follow up questions you can expect. Follow up means they can design an experiment and they can ask like they are scientists. All right. So they will be dealing with higher or you can say the detailed part of you can say the minute thing of any any experiment. So they will be asking a detailed experiment. So you can expect a follow up experiment or follow up questions from all these topics like say scientific instrument that I have mentioned. It can be PCR it can be ELISA, it can be facts, it can be flow cytometry, it can be any microscopy. So you should be well prepared with the principle and working mechanisms of all the microscopy, all the general instruments that are there in the lab.
The next is clear picture about the BSc minor trainings and MSc internship. This is the very first question that is asked what you have done in your MSc dissertation and that time you should not be blank like you should not be able to answer you should not do it like this instead you should be able to answer each and everything that is asked by the interviewer you should be able to answer your objective your scope and what were your experimental uh, you can say the uh, process and what was your final outcome what did you find at the last during msc dissertation so you should be well aware about the bsc trainings what you have done as well as msc internship still if you are not knowing anything you have just uh, qualified say and if you are not knowing anything go back and see all your dissertation thesis and firstly learn all the things recall all the things that you have done in the lab so that will be able to or you can say that will be very easier for you to qualify this interview because from here only they will um, find one positive point for about the aspirant or the candidate like they are having the knowledge of what all skills they have practiced and they have uh, done in the lab. So you should be knowing about the MSc dissertation. Firstly, they will be asking about MSc dissertation. If you are answering back, so if you are answering all the things properly, they will be going to the MBSc minor trainings and they will be asking from there also. So you should be well aware and should have a clear picture about the BSc minor trainings as well as the MSc internships. And you can also expect the fundamental questions on biotechnology like what are the uh, difference between pro cyto uh, pro inflammatory and anti inflammatory cytokine what are the examples of these so you should know about the differences between the cytokine profile also the general principles of techniques like all the techniques that are there in the laboratory and also the experiment experimental methods like suppose if they are asking about any experiment that you have done in your msc dissertation so that time you should be able to answer that because you should be saying the title about that so after that they will be taking questions from that title and they will be asking okay you have done this so what would be the process for DNA isolation and if you are not answering the basic protocol that is DNA isolation so that time it will create a bad or you can say the negative impact in front of the interviewer so make sure you are answering all the general techniques and its principles as well as the experimental method that are asked to you by the interviewer. Now the fourth is designing of an experiment related to any concept. Now you can here you can expect the question where they can design an experiment like they ask in CSI net part C question. So here they can ex design an experiment and they will be asking for the outcome. So this time you will be able to analyze the question very fast. So they will be giving you some time like some let's say 30 to 60 seconds and that time you you should be able to analyze the question and answer for that particular question the next is should have three strong expertise in the subject area so before you are appearing for your interview make sure that you should be able to know your three strong expertise because from that area only they will be questioning you and if you are saying about biochemistry you told biochemistry is my stronger area and if you are not able to answer anything about biochemistry then that that will create a bad impact in front of the interviewer and there will be a chances of disqualifying the interview so make sure whatever you are speaking you are speaking truth you are speaking and you you will be able to clarify that and you will be able to answer whatever they are answering whatever they are questioning from that particular question or you can say that field the next is name of the journals specific for any particular field or subjects. The next question that is asked, what is the name of journal? Suppose if you are saying that immunology is my stronger area, that time you should be knowing about the journals that are specific to uh, immunology from where you can uh, you can say you can publish your research work. So this question was personally asked to me by the interviewer and this time it was asked for immunology. So again, if I'm saying about immunology means it is asked to me. So you should be knowing about the name of the journals that is related to that particular field or subject. Again, the next question that is numerous question you can get from pedigree analysis, formulas, etc. Again, they have asked like, can you explain me the autosomal recessive disorder? So you have to explain me it on board. So you should be able to know about the pedigree analysis, how to prove the pedigree analysis. If they are asking about x linked recessive, autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant, so you should be able to 
clarify and prove all these pedigree analysis and also how to calculate this pedigree and also they will be asking about some formula so we'll see what formulas they are asking the next is repeated questions means repeated formulas from molarity and normality they will be giving you calculation where they ask you to calculate the molarity as well as about the normality of the given numerical and also the colony forming unit they will be asking you the cfu formula what is the general calculation in lab they will give you the stock solution and from that you have to prepare the working solution so you should be able to know the m1 v1 is equals to m2 v2 that is a general molarity formula how to calculate the transformation efficiency how to calculate the insert and vector ratio for gene cloning experiment and also the protocols for gene cloning so you should be knowing about all these formulas that are repeatedly asked by the interviewer during uh, you can say interview the next is keyword to an interviewer decides your interview process suppose if they are asking something and if you are talking about some word and if you have mentioned suppose if you have mentioned about microscopy uh, like i was doing microscopy and i have uh, done microscopy this same and time during my msc dissertation so make sure the next question will be your microscopy so you should be very clear about the terms that you are speaking because whatever you are speaking will decide your interview process and the next question will be from that area itself so into keywords to an interviewer decides your interview process that the next is you should always be updated with the latest news and discoveries in the field of science and biotechnology yes you can expect the question from here because they can ask any time about the latest news and discovery that is ongoing in the field of science and biotechnology like now in interviews they started asking about covid news and what are the spike proteins that are present in corona virus how to diagnose covid disease so personally this question was asked to me how to diagnose this covid disease so also they test the student knowledge for covid disease general information and how to diagnose that so diagnosis profile is also being asked so you should be clear about this now once if they are asking uh, any question so if they are asking like uh, tough questions or let's say easy questions so you should not say uh, no i don't know this answer you should be very polite you should be calm to all the question that they are asking you should be saying in a polite way and in a very calm way that sorry i don't know this answer i should uh, refer to the book and i'll learn about this in detail and also never say no to general questions like ph pcr procedure and other general question F means from here you should be clear and you should have a clear thought in your mind like if they are asking general questions like ph how to calculate the uh, ph and pk what is a henderson hanselback equation what are pcr procedure what are the three different steps of pcr amplification and any other question that time you should not say no means you should be able to answer all the basic concepts of biotechnology and for this you have to go back and study all the basic concepts so make sure you're not saying no to all the general questions that are asked by the interviewer to you read a glossary from the uh, good books like uh, bruce alberts laninger cube immunology so make sure you are learning important things from all these standard books so because they will be asking some experimental questions some numerical and some concepts from all these books also you should know the basic protocols for the following topic means you should know the experimental process for the topics such as dna isolation how rna isolation is done and how to maintain that because rna is highly sensitive how to maintain rna in the lab fax staining how the fax staining is done and also the protocol for the pbmc's isolation where you should be knowing the protocol for lymphocytes isolation so you should know all these isolation and protocol where they will be asking and you can expect the questions from all these topics now the next is you must read the lab profile where you are about to work so suppose if you are enrolling about or for your GRF interview or for GRF. So if you will be working under any supervisor, so that time you will be reading all the lab profiles and all the biography of that supervisor, all research interest and all the work that he is dealing with. So you should learn about and read about the lab profile that you are about to work. The next is you can expect questions from the function profile of reagents like T buffer, chloroform and phenol. So they will be asking, okay, you have mentioned the DNA protocol, how the DNA is isolated. And this time you will be able to mention and you will be able to say what is a function of T buffer, 
what is the use of chloroform and phenol during DNA isolation, what is the role of ethereum bromide, what is the uh, role of ethanol during precipitation and also SDS and beta amine differences, what is their role in western blotting and protein purification. So all these things you should be knowing a clear idea, you should be having a concept of all these reagents that are basically used in biotechnology lab. The next is you can also expect a general question from gene cloning like what are the steps of gene cloning, what is the report gene selectable marker how to select the recombinant colonies as well as the process for western blotting that needs to be addressed to the interviewer so if interviewer is asking you about the STS gel elector process so this time you should be able to answer about all the protocols and all the functional profile of the reagents that are asked by the interviewer the next is now you can expect the some common examples of stain that are used during facts analysis so you may expect a question from stains you should be knowing about the example of a stain that are used during facts analysis like per CP, fit C as well as P. So all these examples of a stain you should be knowing. The last is if you are joining for any infection biology and now suppose if you are joining in any infection biology like lab let's say tuberculosis, cancer biology or HIV etc. Any infection biology so this time you should be knowing about all the in and outs of infection biology you should be knowing about the basic information and also the concept should be clear like they are asking about in tuberculosis so you should be knowing about how tuberculosis is spread to uh, individuals and what are the chemotherapeutic agents what are the drug regimens that is given for six months so you should be knowing about all these things for tuberculosis what are the genres that are related to it so all these simple questions that will be asked from this particular infection biology so here we have dealt with all the questions that are asked general question we have seen and also we have seen the questions that are asked from biotechnology so general question you should be preparing for seven to eight questions that i have specifically mentioned and also you should be preparing about the general biotechnology question from where you can expect the questions in or during your interview so this is all about the video where we have discussed the interview tips for jrf qualified candidates so if you have qualified your jrf examination and now you're looking for a jrf position or any kind of phd position in a lab then follow all these tips that i have shared you make sure that you are preparing for seven to eight general questions and also all the research related question that i have mentioned to you if you are knowing all the questions any other question you can take up that also but these are the general questions that I have mentioned here. So I think the information that I shared with you was beneficial and if you find the information is beneficial, do like, share and subscribe to our channel that is Biotechnica. Meet you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Have a nice day. Keep learning.